Right here we have a control called volts per division. It's also sometimes known as the vertical amplifier. The volts per division sets the sensitivity of the input. For example, if I set this on one volt per division, that means that for every volt that appears here at the end of the probe, the trace will move up one division. If I set it on two volts per division, it will take two volts here to move it up just one division. The next setting is five volts per division. For every five volts here at the tip of the probe, the trace moves up one division. The next setting is 10 volts per division. After that, 20 volts per division. And then finally, 50 volts per division. You can use the scope to read low voltages too. For example, at its most sensitive point, it's 20 millivolts. That's 20 thousandths of a volt per division. 50 millivolts per division, one tenth of a volt, two tenths of a volt per division, one half volt per division. Let's scope the output of a typical video game power supply and take a look at it. And in fact, there are really three outputs, aren't there? There's the plus five, the minus five, and the plus 12. Let's take a look at the plus 5 volt output first, since that's the main power supply. And when we scope the plus 5 volt output, we see that the trace has moved up approximately two and a half divisions. Again, here's the baseline set right in the center of the graticule. And we see that it's moved up one, two, about two and a half divisions. I have the volts per division control set on two volts per division. If it's set on two volts per division and the trace has moved up one, two and a half divisions, we must be looking at five volts, right? Let's take a look at the minus five volt now. And when I move the scope probe to read the minus five volt, we see that the trace moves down. So positive voltage will make the trace move up from the baseline where negative voltage makes it move down. And when we look at this thing, we can also measure the voltage here. Remember, I'm still set on two volts per division here on the volts per division setting. And we see now that it's moved two divisions. It's moved two divisions down. But wait a minute, only two. It's supposed to be minus five. It appears to be only minus four volts. And that's not unusual. I've seen the minus five be anywhere from minus four to minus six and still work perfectly okay in a video game power supply. Now let's try scoping the plus 12 volt power supply. And when I move the oscilloscope probe to measure the plus 12, wow, where'd the trace go? Well, remember we had the baseline set in the middle and we're still on two volts per division on the volt per division selector. If it's two volts per division and I'm scoping around 12 volts, I expect it to be about six divisions, huh? And starting from the center, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. The trace is actually two divisions here above the top of the screen, above the top of the graticule. Well, when you get in a situation like this, you may wonder, where the heck is my trace? What's going on? There's always the beam finder. Every oscilloscope has a button or control called the beam finder. And when you press the beam finder, it shows you where the beam is. In other words, it actually compresses what we call the vertical sweep, the vertical circuit, and the horizontal, and shows you, and even it brightens it up, and shows you where the trace is on the oscilloscope. In this case, it shows me that the trace is way up off the screen, and if I were to move the vertical position control down, I could see it. Of course, now it's all out of calibration, and I have to recalibrate the baseline. And I do that by setting the input selector here to ground and selecting a new spot for my baseline. You don't actually have to remove the probe. I just did that so you can see the selector here. Now we have a couple of choices. We can either move the baseline way down to the bottom and stay on two volts per division. Let's see how that works. And here we see, again, here's the, here's the baseline, the first line up from the bottom. Here we see one, two, three, four, five, Eh, five and three quarters, almost six divisions, so it's just under 12 volts. Or the other alternative is, 
We can leave the baseline right in the center if we wanted to, but this time set the scope on 5 volts per division. Here's the baseline, and we can see that it's moved up one, two, a little more than two divisions. Uh, we're on 5 volts per division. If we've moved up uh, a little more than two divisions, then uh, we're looking at you know, around 12 volts. And around 12 volts is what it is. Measurements on the oscilloscope are not terribly precise. That may surprise you, but uh, when the trace falls in between a couple of subdivisions, you find yourself saying things like, well, it's around 12 volts or somewhere near 12 volts, where if you were using a digital multimeter, it might say something like 11.78 volts. So uh, the oscilloscope is not particularly accurate when it comes to measuring voltage. Anytime you reset your volts per division control, it's a good idea to double check your baseline. Set the input selector on ground and then set the baseline wherever you want it. Now, in this case, if we're measuring, for instance, plus 12 or any positive voltage, I never expect the voltage, uh, the trace to go down below the center, right? Because we're not looking at anything that's negative. So you can set the, the baseline down at the bottom. Just another quick word about the probe itself. Uh, this is actually known as a times 10 probe. There's two different kinds of oscilloscope probes you can get, a direct probe and a, what we call a times 10 probe. Uh, all, virtually all of your work will be done with a times 10 probe. In the times 10 probe, for every 10 volts here at the tip of the probe, only one volt is applied to the oscilloscope. Without the times 10 probe, the maximum voltage this oscilloscope would be able to handle would be 40 volts. That's uh, 5 volts per division and, and 8 divisions. With the times 10 probe, the maximum is 50 volts per division and the oscilloscope can display waveforms of up to 400 volts. So virtually all your work will be done with the times 10 probe. Let's look at some other things with the oscilloscope. There are some common signals that you'll see a lot, and, and this is certainly one of them. This is what your AC power looks like on the oscilloscope. It's called a sine wave. And this is, uh, if I set the baseline here right at the center, that's zero volts. The baseline is zero volts or ground. And what you see here is the sine wave alternately positive and negative. This is the positive half cycle and this is the negative half cycle down here. Here's another waveform. It's called a triangle wave for obvious reasons. The triangle wave is very similar to another waveform called the sawtooth. And, and here's a typical sawtooth waveform. Again, for obvious reasons, it looks just like the teeth in a saw. You may also see a square wave like this. This signal is very common in digital circuits. It's called a square wave because it's approximately square. Another variation of the square wave looks like this. Here we still see that the waveform is basically square, but we see some very small, very narrow uh, pulses that, that go in the down direction. You'll see plenty of other waveforms as well, of course. Um, most of your digital circuits look something like square waves. Um, in something like a monitor, however, you'll be seeing all kinds of interesting waveforms, and we'll be taking a look at some monitor waveforms toward the end of this lesson. Well, let's take a look at a few more examples and see exactly how we measure voltage using the oscilloscope and using the graticule on the front. Uh, for example, here's a triangle wave. And uh, right now, my volts per division knob is set on 0.5 or a half a volt per division. So I have a half a volt, one volt, and I see two subdivisions. Well, if it's a half a volt for each major division and there's five subdivisions, each one has to be worth a tenth of a volt. So it's one half, one volt, 1.1, 1.2, 1.2 volts. Here's a square wave. It's exactly one, two, three, four divisions. I have the volts per division set again on a half a volt. So this must be two volts. 
Here's a sawtooth waveform. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six divisions. I'm set on two tenths of a volt per division. Six times two tenths is 1.2 volts. And if it helps you, just count up. To be honest with you, I'm not very good at mathematics. In fact, I'm not very good at all at mathematics. So all I do is look at the volts per division knob and see, okay, it's set on two tenths of a volt per division. And then I just start counting. There's two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, 10 tenths, one of course, and another subdivision. So it's 1.2 volts. That's all you have to do. It's really pretty simple. Um, let's look at another one and you'll see what I mean. Okay, here's a sine wave. Um, let's count the divisions. Uh, with the sine wave resting on the second from the bottom line, I have one, two, three, four, five major divisions and one and a half subdivisions. So five uh, major subdivisions and one and a half uh, times five volts gives me somewhere around 26 volts, but it's a lot easier if you just count up. Look, it's five volts per division. So you just go, okay, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's a little less than half. It's about 27 volts, something like that. I mean, yes, you can count up each subdivision is one volt, and it is 26 and almost up another subdivision. It's almost 27 volts. In oscilloscope work, to be honest with you, that's close enough. Here's another sine wave. In this case, I'm on two volts per division. And again, counting up, I see two, four, six, eight, ten, not quite 12. Um, 11 and a half volts or so AC. Here's those pulses we saw earlier. And uh, if we take a quick look at the baseline, we can see it's right there. And count up, I'm on one volt per division. One, two, three, four, eh, about four and a half volts, which is a really good solid, what we call a TTL level. Now, you may have noticed that most of the waveforms we've been looking at have been in this range. They've been in this kind of uh, three or four division range, and that's really where you want to keep it. Um, you don't want to have your volts per division set uh, too small because you will not be nearly as accurate when it comes to counting subdivisions. The larger you can make your, your waveform, the more accurate your counting will be, obviously. In addition, there's another circuit we'll look at later on called the trigger circuit. And the trigger circuit depends on uh, a waveform of a certain size, a certain amplitude, as we call it, um, in, in which to trigger. And uh, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if the waveform is, is not large enough, you can see that it doesn't trigger properly uh, without messing around with something. It's called the trigger circuit. We'll take a look at that later on in this lesson. Here's something else you may encounter. Uh, an AC signal that is riding on top of a DC signal. Uh, for example, in this case, you see that the waveform is, is partially off the screen. Um, and um, if, I, uh, if I set the input select to ground, you can take a look. Here's my baseline down here. So what we're seeing here, whatever this is, is, is way above the screen. Uh, beam finder, of course, brings it down in, and you can kind of see that it's partially up there. But this is not at all uncommon um, to have a, uh, some type of a signal riding on top of what we call a DC bias. Um, to eliminate that DC bias so that we can see the signal, you can flip the input select knob or the input select control to AC. And uh, what that will do is, if there is any DC on the signal, it completely removes that. It completely ignores that. So that you can set the input to ground, set your baseline in the center, then flip the input select. Let me remove the probe just so you can see what it looks like. Um, input select to ground. This side is DC, where we've had it so far to measure those DC voltages. Um, there's ground, and on the other side, this is AC. Let me put the probe back in here. When I flip the input